Hey GMS, I am now going to present to you one of the most popular projects I do in the classroom and that is weaving bracelets. So I'm going to give you a little rundown about weaving and then I'm going to get straight to it and explain to you um, the and um, how we're going to create a bracelet. We're going to create our own loom and bracelet. So if you ever had a favorite winter scarf or a fuzzy sweater, that clothing item might have been woven from wool or other materials. So weaving is the process of interlacing vertical and horizontal threads to create a textile. So a textile is something that you could wear. People around the world have practiced weaving for centuries and they use different textiles. I've seen people on Facebook use garbage sacks or the sacks you get from Walmart to um, create some really beautiful things and um, scarves, shirts, and so on. So it's whatever you feel like you can weave together and there's all kinds of possibilities. So our mission is that we are going to do this. As you can see in the background, I'll make sure I get my there we go. Um, this bracelet right here, you're going to create your own, um, I guess you call it friendship bracelet by making a loom from scratch and weaving and then taking this off and then you can wear it. So I wanted some key terms. When I say loom, you're probably thinking, what in the world? Well, a loom is a piece of equipment that you weave on. So our loom today is going to be very simple. Um, a lot of looms are wooden frames or complicated and um, electronical controlled modern industrial thing items, but we just can use cardboard, plain old cardboard, simple as that. Um, so a weaver uses a loom to interlace the two kinds of threads called warp and whip. I probably said that completely wrong, and I usually don't refer to it very much, but um, that is, um, the warp is the vertical lines and the whip is the horizontal lines and um, threads. So it depends on which way your thread is going, then that is how um, what you refer to the warp or whip. And looms are basically a series of frames with parts that hold warp threads in place. And then you'll move along and have your whip goes across. So we'll be actually moving the whip around and around and around on this loom. So your materials, again, this is another COVID inspired project. It's a really great stress reliever. And um, if you don't have materials to do this, contact me at school. I can hook you up with some yarn, but all you need is some yarn, cardboard, scissors, um, and your hands and fingers. Now your yarn, you can be all the same color or you can do different colors and they don't have to be the same um, texture and consistency. I've had students do these with like really thick yarn and then small, like thin pieces of yarn and it's made for a really cool looking bracelet. So grab whatever you have around you and uh, try to make the best of it. So we're gonna get straight to creating a loom. And as you can see in these pictures over here to the right, and there's just a piece of cardboard. Take anything that's circular. I just picked up a mug. This is the bottom of my um, tape dispenser. Just anything that's circular. Just trace it. Doesn't matter how. Um, I'm not looking for an exact size, but something that you can hold good in your hand. And um, you're going to cut that out. And what I have here at the bottom is you're going to create eight notches. So a lot of people want to get ahead of themselves and just start making it slits or notches around through here, but they need to be evenly spaced out. So I like to use a ruler and um, you don't necessarily have to use a ruler, but I like to make markings of one. They go right straight across from each other, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, I can do math. So, as you can see, I have a really good diagram where I have a um, put a pencil mark for the middle. So, I know where the middle is, and then I placed my notches. Here, I took my scissors, and I cut small slits. As you can see, that slit is really to hold your yarn in place. So, you don't want to make it really big, but enough that it can hold the yarn for you. And poke a hole in the middle. I always have a lot of questions how to do the whole, I know, safety, but you want to just 
I can usually just take my scissors and poke and sometimes just like move it around and they will poke the hole through there, okay? That's gonna hold everything in place in the middle for you. So we're gonna place it on the loom. Um, you need seven pieces of yarn. And, well, don't wanna do that. Okay, seven pieces. Um, you will, I always get this is that um, you get confused because you made eight notches. Well, even though you made eight notches, you still just need seven pieces of yarn. And I usually have a question about how long it should be. I would say a foot and a half um, is usually a good idea. This one that I have right now, that's about a little bit over a foot. So if you did like a foot and a half, that'd be awesome. If you get it too long, um, it gets kind of tangled up when you're working with it. And I'm gonna show you how you can um, make sure that doesn't happen because that can be a pain in the butt and you usually waste a lot of time trying to untangle. Um, so you're gonna take your seven strands and I bet a lot of students have problem with this, but you are going to group them all together like this the very tip and you are going to tie a knot. Just a simple knot and get it tight. Since now I have that, I'm gonna take my loom. And as you can see, I have the hole poked in the middle and I'm going to take this knot and poke it through that middle hole. This is how we're setting up the loom. So you may have to wiggle it, push it a little bit, but you get it in there. So you see it's little sprouts up here and then flip it over. So this is what it should look like. And you're gonna take those seven strands and you're going to put them one in each slot. And like I said, you only have seven strands and eight slots. So that means simple math one slot will be empty. So that's my empty slot. So this is what looks like a little jellyfish, doesn't it? Um, your loom should be set up like this, okay? And remember, it's on the opposite side of this little sprout thing. Okay, let me move my face so you can see everything Awesome. So we're going to weave on this loom now. So starting from the empty spot, you're going to count through, um, I like to go three spaces back. So one, two, three on that third one, you're going to pull it out completely and move it to empty slot. And then from here, you're going to go one, two, three, pull it out, move it to the empty spot. And now you got another new empty spot. And you're just gonna keep doing this over and over and over again. You wanna make sure you stay in the same direction. I have found that people, um, they get their, they wanna go one direction. As you can see, I'm going this way because that's a counterclockwise. And um, I've had students go counterclockwise and then clockwise. And then all it does is unravel as you are creating your bracelet. So you're kind of defeating the, you're canceling out what you're doing. So this little um, diagram right here shows you if, I, well, you're not of age to drive, but when you start driving, they always talk about putting your hands on 10, uh, 10 and two on the steering wheel. So you can think of this as a steering wheel and 12 o'clock, as you can see is up top and you have four o'clock down here. So you're going to, that's how you can move it that way counterclockwise thinking of it in numbers if you need to as you can see this one says one two three magic flip it one two three magic flip it and i love this um your parents are probably going to be like oh my gosh she used this term for it. but i always say it's pooping out the bracelet so once you work for so long it comes out of the bottom and I was telling, telling you that sometimes people have issues with it getting really tangled up. So I'm going to show you what you can do is that let's say after so many turns on this um, bracelet, 
and it's coming down the bottom. You can just barely see where it's kind of the, it's coming together. Every so often, I love to hold it up high and just brush my fingers through it, make sure that it's all nice and detangled. And then I just pick up and start again, okay? Now, it takes a little bit. I've had kids do this. So my class period is usually about 55 minutes. And I've had um, students do this maybe over the course of three class periods. So don't think you're gonna do it really super fast. It takes time. All great things um, come with time. So keep that in mind. Now, here's something that everyone really gets, you know, tripped up on. They do a really good job of the weaving. They, oh, they, um, they are able to, um, am I just moving too fast for my, okay, I'll just leave it there. Um, they understand when they get to going on the weaving, it just all comes out and it's beautiful. As you can see, it's coming out the, down through the middle. And then when they run out of string, or if they get to the point that their bracelet, it's just the right length for a bracelet or maybe even a necklace, they um, don't know how to take it off the loom because you're not gonna keep this on a loom and wear it, would you? I mean, it'd be kind of a, be a fashion statement for sure. But how you're gonna take this off is very simple. It's almost so simple that it's confusing. So once you get the bracelet made and it's dropped down through the middle, as you can see in the first picture, you are just going to take this string one string at a time and just take it out of the loom. Just pull it out of the little notches or slits, which whenever you want to call it, and then pull it all the way out. And then you will just knot the other side. Okay, where did my, oh, here's my finished one. So I put it all together and I knotted it. And now I can wear it. I cleaned it up by um, just cutting the excess yarn off to make it nice and pretty. And I've, these look really cool when you do them all one color and you can see the texture on them. But again, if you have like really thick yarn and then like really thin yarn, those make for some really awesome bracelets too. And these are addictive, I must warn you. So you're gonna be doing these a lot. And since you took this off a loom, that just means you can load it back up and do uh, make another bracelet on here. And um, you can make as many bracelets as you want and, until it probably falls apart. I usually, in my classroom, when we do bracelets, I, you know, if you don't, kids like to keep their looms. If they don't, I like to collect them and then I reuse them for other people. It's really helpful. And um, now for the biggie, I want you to share your new textile that you just wove together. And I have an email, so you can send me a picture. I have a Facebook, an Instagram, a Twitter, and the TikTok, which on the TikTok, you will find a time lapse of me completing this bracelet right here. I really can't wait to see what you all have um, create with this. This is a really fun project and highly addictive. And I've had a couple stores come out of this. A lot of kids made some money off of it. So good luck and have fun. Bye.